Hello and welcome, I'm Tim and this is Tim B at C and it's a uh, afternoon, lit, or early evening edition. <laughs> um, I hope you can forgive my uh, bed head. <laughs> As you know we uh, stagger the watch here and on the afternoons I take a nap. My hair slept very well today. Anyway, we're going to the be doing a westbound passage in the C&D Canal. Chesapeake, Delaware Canal. We call it the C&D Canal. So we're, this is us right here on the chart plotter. We're coming down like this. We'll be going around like this in here. And if I zoom out, you can see where we, this canal is going to connect the Delaware River with the Chesapeake Bay. Ultimately, we'll end up in Baltimore if all goes well. But I thought you guys would think it's fun because uh, I don't know how well it's going to come out. I wanted to do a time lapse of the uh, of the transit, but I think that it's going to be dark for the end of it. But we'll see how it goes. This is Pea Patch Island, and uh, I think that's called Fort Pea Patch, but I could be wrong. Any of you guys know? Let me know in the comments. Uh, apparently, we have an eastbound ship that at some point it's got a 124 foot beam. We're going to meet him at some point and uh, there's a dredge that we're going to have, there's a dredge over here but there's a dredge in the canal that we're going to have to figure out too as well but should be fun come along and find out hopefully everything will go well So we're going with a fair tide, doing eight knots with a loaded barge, loaded 50, and, and the tide's going this way, and we got to turn and go in here. So what I'm going to do is cut this buoy and start going. We'll probably end up all the way down here before we get turned around. So that's going to be our plan. And uh, it looks hairy, but it's fine. we got plenty of room. Hopefully it won't be an issue. If you see that other tug and barge off in the distance over here, they're at anchor. So they're not an issue. <laughs> well, at least yet. <laughs> now, we're cruising right along, so I'm going to pull a little bit of power off. So if I need some more power in the turn, I can go back and get it. That green buoy right here, you'll see there's going to be a red buoy on the other side, which kind of looks like it's opposite of what you would think for buoy HB, but that's because we're intersecting with a channel going like this to Dell City. So uh, this is the end of the Dell City run. So we get down to 7776 seven, now, bleeding off power, bleeding off speed all the time. You can see the tide working on the buoy over there. Gives you a good indication of what's going to happen to us. We'll get pointed for the canal, but we'll still be going sideways. All right, it takes a little while to get this thing going, so I'm going to start coming over and uh, giving about 20 degrees a right rudder. So maybe I'll give her the whole thing. I'll give about 35 degrees here. And really try to get her moving. We're going to eat up some real estate with this. I've made my security calls. I've checked in with WB33, which is the canal control run by the Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, everyone knows we're coming. Okay, I'm hard over. And uh, my turn is going well. Even if we turn towards that buoy, we're going to be set down all the time. So really won't matter. We're rotating, but our direction is still going that way. And uh, it, once you get in by the jetties there, the effect laterally of the tide is dissipated if not 
all limited, then you just have to, you'll either have a fair current or a uh, head current. Okay, so I'm going to reduce my uh, turn down to about 20 degrees on my rudder. Now down to 15. She actually came a lot around a lot better than I expected. Now hopefully I can get her checked up. <laughs> so I am at zero degrees rudder. She's still turning. In fact, I'm going to give her 10 degrees of counter rudder to the port to try to check her up because you can see our next buoy there and we want to be on this side of that next buoy. But that's going to happen anyway because our direction, even though we're turning this way, we're still going like this. Kind of doing a, uh, you call it a funny car thing, something like that, a NASCAR, they come around sideways around the track. All right, so I'm going to give it more. I'm going to give it a uh, 20, 25 degrees. Uh, you know, I'm going to put it all the way over to port because uh, she just keeps wanting to spin right around. Right now on the wrong side of that buoy. But like I say, I can't hit, according to the predictor line, I'm not going to hit that buoy anyway, but I want to check up our swing. Our predictor buoy, our predictor line still has us coming like that. It's moving all the time this way. Doing 4.9 knots. I'm a little bit less than half on my throttles. Okay, she's starting to come left all the time, so I'm going to put the rudder back to zero. It means I've taken the energy out of it doing that uh, right hand turn because I still want to be really tight on that uh, mid-channel buoy. It'll be green and red because it's the end of the Dell City uh, channel. So now that predictor line is coming over, it's more like this. So uh, it's looking better all the time. I'm going to give about uh, 10 degrees right rudder now to kind of hold us on tight to that buoy or attempt to anyway, we're going to fall by it because of the tide. Holding at 4.9 knots, so i got plenty of room, plenty of power if I need, if I get into trouble I can do something. Long time viewers of the channel will have seen many videos I have of the Cape Cod Canal, and uh, my plan if I get around to it, I want to do a little bit of research uh, before I edit this video. And um, the way I understand it, I've been told that the, Cape, the, the success of the Cape Cod Canal, the Cape Cod Canal had a couple failed ventures that were private before the, uh, I, I guess they were successful for a, in part, but uh, it was never big enough or able and enough to uh, handle the big ships that needed, you know, the deep draft to really make it worthwhile back in the sailing days. And uh, eventually the Army Corps of Engineers took it and they made it big enough and the Cape Cod Canal ex saw such great success that uh, they decided to do the same thing with the uh, C&D Canal. And so much of the C&D Canal looks very similar uh, you know how the canal looks, not exactly, you know, different trees, obviously they're in New England and we're down here in the mid-Atlantic. So. Okay, so let me come about uh, five degrees starboard. We're up to five knots now, still about holding the same. Everything's looking good. I'm not in the channel yet. Actually, I'm going to come all the way over to 20 degrees to starboard to get us turned so when we get lined up for the channel, I can start putting some power on. Actually, that's about 25 degrees. Bow is starting to go, and if you remember, I had trouble slowing the bow down the last time, so i got to put that in my memory and say, this thing wants to take a dive on me, so I'll have to stop before that happens. All right, I don't know what's going to happen when the sun hits the lens here, but uh, <laughs> just as long as it's out of my eyes, as much as you guys want to see things, it's kind of more important than I do. <laughs> I'm up here with Luke. What do you think, Luke? <laughs> you think we ought to see? Or you think the audience ought to see? I think you're doing good. <laughs> Luke should be a politician. All right. Now I'm going to give it a 20 degrees port because she's coming around pretty good. I'm going to start to increase my power and get some movement going. We're doing five knots. And I want to get in 
before we get over to those jetties, I want to be inside because the tide's pushing us sideways right now. So I'll start poking the power to it. I'm still uh, about 20, 25 degrees to port. All right, steadying up. So I'm starting to ease my rudder because it's steadying up now. And I got it down to about, uh, about 10, 15 degrees of port. She's coming up left, so now I'm going all back to zero. She still wants to wander over that way, but that's okay because we're just on the edge of the channel now. In fact, I'm going to give it a little bit of right, six degrees right rudder, just to kind of steady that wiggle motion up. You can kind of see the tide line in the canal, and that's where the canal water is meeting the river water which is basically the same type of water. I'm just talking about the movement, not the, not the salinity. I had a commenter <laughs> who was, it kind of seemed as though he was pre predisposed to kind of fight with me. And uh, he thought that we were in a river that we weren't in. He told me to check my charts. And that's all right. It's uh, nice that he cares that much about it, to spend that much time writing about it. But then the next line, he wrote another thing where I had said that uh, the, the Delaware River is tidal way up, all the way up there in Philly. He's like, no, it's not. It's not brackish water at all. And uh, it got me thinking. I've been thinking about it. And Lord knows, with the stuff that I've seen floating in this river, I'm not about to stick my tongue in this and find out if it's salty or not. But I do know that there's 6.4 feet of tide at the last dock that we were at. That's what the tide station said, anyway. So I'd like to think that in six hours, this river wouldn't raise the whole river bank up. <laughs> you know, if you blocked it off, I don't think that the river would fill up six and a half feet in six hours or 6.4 feet I think there's got to be some uh, other water flushing in from down in the bay but certainly not worth arguing about but this guy seemed to think it was and uh, I'm happy for the comments so keep the comments coming good or bad they all help <laughs> I think Luke both Luke and I are not sunglass guys. There's some people that wear sunglasses all the time. And uh, I've never really been a sunglass guy. And right now, I'm kind of wishing that I was. <laughs> On our boat, the boat that we normally run, we have these beautiful shades that you can pull down, you know, that are like limo tint. We don't have them here. So I guess this is just preparing our eyes for what's going to happen at the... Lunar eclipse. Are you ready for the lunar eclipse, Luke? It will be after this. <laughs> it will be after this, he says. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure that these the way these videos come out later, the lunar eclipse will have been long gone. But I think it's supposed to be April 8th, I believe. And uh, I see everybody getting all excited about it. And all I was hanging out with my sister and her husband and one of her friends was renting a place way up in Maine where it's supposed to be a perfectly in alignment with everything and I'm like, you know this is April right now we have clear skies but the odds of having a clear sky in April down east Maine <laughs> for that one part of the day I wouldn't say the odds are that great anyway, we're crossing our fingers and hopefully we'll see a nice solar eclipse Anyway, we're still, we're just entering the jetties now. It's going to get tighter, as you'll see. Now there's some stuff up in the water. I don't think that's, oh, man. Oh, yeah, those are just reflections. It looks like there's buoys up there, but those are just reflections of the next bridge's towers reflecting on the water because it's so flat up there. But as we'll get further in, and uh, as the sun goes down more lights will come on the shore it'll be very reminiscent of being in the uh, Cape Cod Canal so I'm thinking now you see it looks like I'm right in the middle but Luke I'm way down here 
I'm going to have to come right quite a bit. The sun's so bright, I wasn't looking at the plotter. I was looking at where we were going, and uh, the plotter's really giving me good information. I've got plenty of water ahead of me, but I'm not in. The, I'm right on the edge of the far side of the or the near side of the channel, so I need to get more in the middle. So I come right a little bit. Start working my way over there. So we were making eight, eight point seven, something like that, with a fair tide. Now we're in the canal doing the same RPM, and we're making 5.2 knots. <laughs> so kind of gives you an idea of how much the tide influences what we do. So I've been slowly sneaking over to the left, and uh, I need to straighten that out. So I'm going to come back right a little bit again. <laughs> kind of blinded here. Anyway, you guys have seen what there is to see as far as maneuvering goes. I'm going to try, hopefully I won't mess this up, but I'm going to try to uh, do a time lapse for you so that you can see the whole canal and not have to hang out for a couple hours listen to me run my jaws. <laughs> Some commenters are really happy when I do that. <laughs> All right, here we go. If you enjoyed the video, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a big thumbs up. It helps the algorithm and it helps get this video out. And if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon where you can become a monthly and yearly subscriber. We had no way of knowing that the events that would take place just six hours from now would definitely changed this voyage and changed a lot for a lot of people. As you're probably well aware of by now, a container ship uh, coming out of Baltimore uh, lost power and collided with the Key Bridge, the Francis Key Scott Bridge, and uh, they're still looking for people in the water that were working on the bridge, and it's a uh, definitely sobering event and uh, has left us anchored just 10 miles away it's funny how these things work out I don't know if funny is the right word but uh, we as I watch this time lapse and the sun going down weather beautiful thinking nice easy nice run everything's going to be fine had no way of knowing what was going to happen so Right now we're currently anchored in the uh, Brewerton Tolchester Junction, just about 10 miles away from where the bridge stood. And uh, our thoughts and prayers definitely go out to those involved. And uh, that's all I have to say about that for now. So we'll get back to the uh, video. As we go down here, I'm trying to think of things to say, make it rather interesting, but I've got to tell you, my all my thoughts right now are with the uh, people involved with the uh, bridge collision, elision, elision, not collision. And uh, so, other than telling you that uh, the sun will go down and the video will look more and more boring for those that uh, are looking for some action. I'll tell you that later on you will see us pass the container ship and it was very very tight <laughs> and uh, then at the very end of the video you see us going by a dredge on the right hand side. I think it's probably best that I just let the video play and uh, thank you all very much for watching Hopefully uh, you get something out of this. If you get a chance, please check out my other channel, uh, SV Paquita. Link in the description down below. And uh, once again, our hearts and prayers are go out to all the people involved with the uh, 
bridge elision. Take care, you guys. Be safe. I'll see you on the one.
I'm <laughs> sorry.